So, um, so that's, that's that. You know what, the, the image that we have up on the screen right here, I'm going to um, delay talking about upcoming meetings a little bit. And I'm going to uh, invite uh, Mark Masonuv up to uh, talk about and do his uh, piece on news you can use. Mark Masonuv, everyone. I'll stand back here since I have control of the computer. So these are four things on little news you can use. Get your pens sharp. Uh, get everything ready to go here on this. First thing, uh, whether you um, in, in agreement or not, that's a whole other ball of wax. However, coming up on the 8th is the 5th Annual San Diego Film Awards at Humphreys by the Bay this year. So it's a new venue, outdoor venue. If you've been to Humphreys, those of you who have been, you'll know it's kind of a cool spot. Uh, fifth annual, it's on the 8th. Uh, it'll be aired on the 20th, 27 categories, including acting, directing, writing, makeup, and more. All kinds of fun things. There's an opening reception you can uh, attend as well. Tickets are $25 to $105. For more information, visit website. So there you go, take a quick picture. And that's for uh, the film awards. So the 8th, if any of you are looking for something to do and spend $105, that's up to you. Adobe Creative Cloud, for those of you who have. Who, have a, who has cloud? Anybody here have cloud? Anybody here own cloud? Okay, you'll be paying more. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, so what does that mean? However, understand that uh, five years ago when they launched it, they haven't raised the price in the U.S., Mexico, or Canada in over five years. So they haven't done that. So they're going to start that April 16th in 2018. What does that kind of mean? Well, you're going to increase from $20.99 per month. It's a dollar more. If you're a single user, a single app, you just use one app, one dollar more. If you're an all apps kind of guy, all in, you are at three dollars per month, a three dollar increase. Excuse me, to fifty two ninety nine. So they're breaking the bank, fifty two ninety nine, three dollars. And yeah, I know that's thirty six bucks. I get you. That's a cup of coffee at some places. And then for Teams, it's uh, $10 more per month. And when does it start? Month-to-month uh, -month plan, you'll see it increase after your next billing cycle that occurs on the 16th. If you, however, have an annual plan, you can pay monthly. The new price goes into effect at the end of your term that ends on or after. And you can prepay right now for a year and not have to worry about it. So you can go back and save that $36 and prepay. So you have that ability. Do it right now before the 16th. You can save $36 if you prepay. That is correct, as I understand it. And, you're, and it will not increase. So you can prepay for that, for your year cycle. Okay? Black Magic strikes again. Who has Black Magic cameras? Who likes Black Magic cameras? Okay, so we got a few users here. So Black Magic, I was talking to Bill Bork today, and Bill um, told me about Black Magic has unleashed a new camera. Uh, the Ursa Broadcast 4K live production camera. It looks identical to the Mini that you have right now. However, it features the ability to put on a B4 lens or a bayonet mount lens. So it's kind of cool. It's a cost-effective solution. It's flexible field camera, or you can use it for, you know, producing, you know, film style because it is the 4K camera. Uh, works with existing lenses and batteries. Doesn't make any cards. Got an SD card, NLE readers, all that kind of fun stuff. And it works with some of those older lenses. Some of the folks, the young folks, don't understand that back in the day when you had ENG cameras, they were little bayonet mounts that went on the front long lenses. They zoomed. They're great lenses. They're usually 4.3, and then they started making 16.9 lenses, and then the whole thing exploded. But if you have any of those old ones, you can put them on here, and you can use them. So you can leverage some of that old glass still with this camera and, and other. It may look at other mounts too, but you'll be able to do that with this camera. Okay, older aftermarket lenses and expensive photo lenses. You can use that with this guy. What's the price? No, I think you can use the zoom lenses as well. No, I swear to God, dude. No, I swear to God. A B4. It's a B4 mount. I'm not lying. I'm just telling you. That's what it said on the internet today. When I, when I downloaded and plagiarized all this footage, this is what I did today. It's all that. <laughs> and the price... 3,500 bucks. So it's 35. It's an ENG camera with these lenses plus 3,500 dollars. Doesn't come with a lens, of course, but it's 3,500 bucks. Heck of an entry price if you're a big uh, uh, fan of Black Magic. I don't know if they got that handle problem fixed. I know Mr. Tao experienced some issues with the handle breaking off, which could be an issue. 
Uh, and finally, uh, just today, I think, Pond5 and DJI joined forces. I don't know if you heard this for all of you DJI flyers. This just came out. So they are going to uh, an innovative collaboration, premium collection of licensable aerial footage. What will happen is that if you are a Part 107 pilot, you can submit your footage and put it on Pond 5, and it will be shot exclusively with DJI drones. You can't just use any other drone, but it's got to be a DJI drone. But if you fly those, you can start licensing and try to sell those, and it will be an official licensed product on, uh, on Pond 5 uh, from a Part 107. So that's, that's kind of awesome. And it ensures that you that these footage wasn't just some guy flying on the beach, you know, flying on the beach getting footage. This is uh, DJI. Yes. Only the DJI people. Okay. Only the DJI people. Exactly. So there's that five percent of the market, you know, the karmas that are still flying out there. Uh, you'll be able to still, well, those, won't, those won't go up there, okay? And that is news you can use. Now, go ahead, you're going to plug now. Thank you. Don't hate me. I'm switching over to the presentation, which is what you came to see. It may look pink at first. I think it will slowly turn white, so don't freak out. Your eyes are not going to freak. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, there we go. Yes, dear. Awards banquet. Oh, all done. Okay, well, there's a couple people. I'm nominated. I'm nominated, not going. Nominated, not going. Nominated, not going. I just nominated. want to know which of my friends are going to be there. <laughs> okay. I'm nominated for costume design. Oh, cool. cool. Thank you, Charlene. Okay, great. Another shout out for that event. Um, okay, so uh, coming up in April. While we do the change over here, which is looks like it's already starting to work, you want to uh, the button there, Chris? Um, April, we're we're stepping off from this project here, where we're getting some information how to update and upgrade uh, and activate our websites, and with best practices, so your your SEO will work better along those lines. Next month, we're going to be back up at John Paul the Great Catholic University, but across the street in a great meeting space on the corner of Grand and Maple. Um, great little patio out front um, and um, um, great space inside. And that's going to be on social media. So we're hitting all of, the, all of them. And... We have a guest speaker who's also a professor at John Paul the Great, Keith Culbertson, on how to monetize your social media. So, uh, yes, yes. How, what, do you, what does it take? Now, all of the ins and outs, so we're calling this the nuts and bolts of social media and how to monetize. But uh, Mickey and I have been working diligently to really dig. Now, uh, Mickey is our, where are you, Mickey? Hold your hand up. Oh, sorry. Um, I look at the wall so I don't have to look at anybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but um, the nuts and bolts, uh, what does it take really to post? To the top six do we have? Uh, seven? Yeah. Um, social media platforms, and also, and and, and uh, Chris, our speaker tonight, will kind of touch on this a little bit. Also, part of what he's going to be talking about is developing your hub. And I don't want to steal, but I'm going to preview just a little bit. How do you develop your hub? What are you all about? And then, what are your parents outside of that? So, what are your stories that come off of you? What are your services? And then what are your children out of each service? What do you do in the detail? So part of this is going to help us understand how to attack this uh, so it's not so daunting. And then we're going to follow up with social media, and we're going to have a much better uh, chance to really put an effective um, stab at updating our businesses and promoting our, our features or featurettes, our movies, our projects, whatever it may be. 
and I'm looking really forward to that. That's the, uh, the fourth uh, Wednesday in April. So that's the April meeting. I believe it's the 25th. 25th, yeah. Then in May, we're rolling around. So in the past, we've done Media Pro Camp, and we've talked about that before. I'm sure many of you have been at Media Pro Camp. But this year, Mike Brugemeyer, Brugemeyer is stepping it up and changing the format a little bit. This will be the first of two day-long events. This one's going to be a Saturday, May 19th. It's free. It's free. So tell your friends. Uh, you got to register. We're going to be sure that, you know, if you don't register, we're going to, like, give it a stink eye when you open it. Um, Right, right. But that's not a fee, really. That's your the opportunity to buy your lunch so it comes in and you don't have to leave or, want, you know, et cetera. So I'm going to let Mike talk about this a little bit. Everybody, uh, Mike, Mike Brugemeyer. Uh, the, the genesis of this was a seminar I went to a number of years ago uh, hosted by the Camera Guild uh, up in L.A. where they had an all-day seminar with directors of photography and each one got an hour to show you one thing that they do or show you how they work. And uh, the highlights of that day was, was uh, watching two really big name directors of photography absolutely not be able to speak in normal human being talk. Um, and then uh, an hour with Haskell Wexler where I learned more about cinematography just by watching him talk to his gaffer and key grip. And so this, this day-long seminar is going to be a series of, of cinematography or uh, cinematography and directing workshops an hour at a time featuring uh, uh, directors of photography who do uh, good work. So... Um, there, I'm still considering, uh, I've had some people uh, pull me aside and, and ask for things like a how to succeed in this business hour-long class. Um, so I'm thinking about doing that as well, just to um, help us all survive. Uh, but it's primarily going to be uh, uh, working cinematography, working, directing, framing shots, figuring out shots, and getting to watch people who do it as they do it. So you can see what they do and how they do it. Great, great. Uh, that, one, that one is a Saturday, May 19th. Um, it's going to be at a studio um, so that we have some room to actually be able to build that's to be determined. So I have a decent uh, following on social media, um, like 32,000 on Twitter and some other ones. No, no, no. So, no. so what I was going to do is I was going to say, hey, if you have something that's related to travel, I'm more than happy to repost it if you just like put at We Can Explore. And you just need to like tag the image or something like that, and that'll help you get some uh, some followers. So, and all my stuff is at Weekend Explore because that's the name of my series. But I think we should all, can we get on the Facebook page and all put our links for our social media? We need to figure out how to do that because that's a good way to do it. Because that would be some, okay. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, I have to admit that, that this stuff is challenging for, for me. And I'm making an effort <laughs> to to turn turn the corner and, and make it work. But for promoting your products, that's what you have to do. A lot of times you have to to share a little bit and uh, cross promote in order to make it all work. Um, uh, the last little announcement before we introduce um, uh, Chris is um, uh, June 1st, Cinegear. I believe it's the first, that's Saturday, June 1st, Cinegear. Um, we're just organizing a field trip, okay? We're not getting a big bus this time. We're just organizing a field trip. So we're just promoting it. If you want to go, 
start talking to your friends. I can take five, so you know we're just going to carpool and we'll try and organize it so that um, so we carpool together. Frankly, where we met before we went up to the Warner Brothers studio, there's a park and ride right off of Highway 5, uh, Sorrento Valley Mesa, somewhere right underneath the freeway there. That would kind of be a good place for everybody. Let's meet there, and then so we all kind of arrive together. I'm just thinking out loud on that. But um, So that's coming up uh, June 1st, and then further on after that, more meetings throughout the year. Um, so... I would like to introduce uh, Chris Kinneman, who uh, just turned on his microphone there. And um, this is an opportunity to uh, get to know how to uh, update your website. Chris has been building websites for 10 years plus. He's a graduate of the Art Institute, worked for MindGroove for a while, uh, freelanced for a while, and now he's uh, the, the lead developer, or director, yeah, Director of Web Development for um, uh, AAC. So without further ado, let's start the program. Uh, Chris. Thank you. All right. Uh, key word there that ranks. Um, you know, the company I've been working for, American Addiction Centers, um, we are run by uh, search, um, is how everyone finds us. Um, so I've uh, picked up some nice tips and tricks uh, along the way uh, that I think will help everybody out. Um, uh, as my father said, um, I worked at a digital agency, MindGroove, uh, for years. Um, I, I picked up a lot of different ways to do things, uh, different ways of thinking, different uh, methods of building websites. Um, with that, a lot of WordPress theme development. So we build a lot of custom WordPress themes. Um, that said, I did a lot of freelance work as well. Uh, so I know what it's like to turn a, uh, a theme that you buy out in the wilds and do some minor customization to that. Um, uh, I've done various application developments. I'm currently the director of web development for American Addiction Centers, the marketing team. Uh, we build websites that help uh, individuals and family members uh, struggling with addiction to connect them to services that can uh, hopefully change their life. Um, uh, there we build websites, WordPress themes, APIs, um, apps, tools, and you name it. We do all sorts of different stuff uh, with uh, front and back end developers, team of designers, team of content writers, a social media team. Uh, SEO team, um, and various other people in the middle to kind of help connect the dots. Um, um, so just a, a brief overview of the topics. Uh, get a little louder there. Um, we're going to cover, you know, just uh, DNS, hosting, themes, plugins, some best practices, and some SEO 101. Um, the goal here is to give you guys the tools to make informed decisions. Um, there's no silver bullet here. I wish I could give you one. It's, that's just not really the case. Everyone wants a unique website. Um, there's a lot of themes out there. I've got some good suggestions to get you going in the right direction um, and on, uh, on all of these topics right here. Um, if you catch things midway that you just have a burning question about, we can have a dialogue about it. Um, but we'll also do some Q&A at the end. What's DNS? Um, yeah. Funny you ask that. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Great question. I, staged. <laughs> staged. Staged. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Thank you, Jay. DNS is your uh, domain name system. Um, and um, there are various tools out there. Namecheap and GoDaddy are kind of the bigger ones in the market. Um, and they're your DNS server. They serve it. They translate that pretty little web address that you have. Um, like we have rehabs.com, they translate rehabs.com into an IP address and make sure everything gets routed properly. Um, they're your vanity name. Um, this Names is the cheap is best. Yeah, I, I, I would definitely prefer uh, uh, Namecheap over GoDaddy. I, that said, like, they all get it done, right? It, it's, uh, you'll, if you don't have any domain names right now, 
I would probably start with Namecheap. If you already have domain names and they're with GoDaddy, yeah, you can transfer them. Is it worth the hassle? Maybe. Um, I don't really know what you're gaining out of that really too much. I still have my website hosted with GoDaddy for years and years. I don't really use it these days, but it's there. I bought it. Um, and so just to be clear, you know, a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about is terminology so you can understand you know, what we're working with here. Um, and your, your DNS, your, your, your domain name, that, that's, that's not your house. <laughs> that's your address. Um, that's where people find you. Um, it could be a P.O. box. It could be up in the hills. It um, doesn't matter. It's, it's your address so people can find you. Um, but uh, hosting, right? So at the end of the day, hosting, it, it's, it's a computer and a hard drive. It's a computer that lives somewhere else, the cloud. Um, whatever you want to call it, we're going to talk about some different hosting options. Um, it, it's, it's a large landscape, so I, I can see how it's a little daunting uh, just to kind of jump into that. But you can kind of compare it, you know, looking at your address, right? This is the plot of land that your website's going to live on. Um, you can put a lot of things here. You could buy hosting and put pictures on it. You can put whatever you want on there. Um, but in our case, what we're going to be talking about today is putting a WordPress site there. Um, and so, uh, again, looking back at like giving you guys the tools to make informed decision, I think it's good to talk about what makes a good host. Um, and this is actually something we've been going through at work recently. Um, we've been transitioning our, um, our server architecture. Um, we've been modernizing it. We've been updating it um, to uh, using the latest version of PHP, uh, latest version of Nginx, and all these extra packages that we use. Um, we actually gained um, between we gained 20% traffic on one site, um, and we're talking about a website that generates millions of users a month, um, and so 20% is a lot. Um, so if that's an indicator for you of how speed matters um, and using modern technologies matter, that, that's, that's it right there. Um, so a lot of the services I'm going to talk to you about, uh, make sure they put that first. Um, you're going to have to make decisions. Do you want to pay more? Do you want to pay less? But uh, you know we'll get there. Um, another big important factor right now, it's HTTPS. Um, this is the secure protocol for uh, HTTP. Um, it's an SSL cert, it's secure, and there's SEO gains to be had. Um, Google actually, um, not too long ago, had a big push where they said, if you're not HTTPS ready, we're going to ding you. Um, so if you have a form on your website, you're transacting information across the wire, um, it, it's basically necessary. And the good news is it's, um, e it's, it's become a lot easier to do this. And a lot of the hosts, I, I believe all the hosts that I'm recommending today, um, do this for you out of the box. Um, so that makes it for everybody. Um, but this is a push we did. And we noticed um, you know, a couple percent gain um, in uh, traffic, um, basically, from just doing that because we got a little additional search, uh, search Can results. You expand on that just a little bit. I'm not quite um, so it's um, when you go to a website and you know you see the protocol, it's HTTP colon slash slash and then the website. HTTPS puts a little S in there. It's a secure protocol uh, to send your information back and forth. It encrypts things that you're sending across the line. So when you go and you type into a form and you put your name, your last name, your phone number, and your email address, your social security number, whatever it may be, um, you want that to be going across a secure protocol. Um, so, so that's really where that comes in, and um, it becomes so prevalent now that it's just kind of run of the mill at this point. It's kind of necessary, um, but there's there's free ways to do it. Um, but again, a lot of the the hosting that I'm going to talk about today do it for you out of the box. Um, another thing to look for, um, and this is you know a small tech detail, but it, it's also important is HTTP two. Um, and this is another uh, improved web protocol for how to pass information. The old HTTP uh, 1.1 was kind of like this handshake method. It'd be like, hey, I'm going to send you something. And I'd say, OK, I'll send you something. It'd be like, OK, you're ready for that? And, and it would start sending it. And you could really only send so much at once. And so HTTP 2 actually opens up like a pipeline. And so it opens a connection and says, hey, I'm going to leave my hand out for you. I'm ready to accept what you have. Um, so you can actually send a lot more resources at once, all those pictures, um, all your video, um, the text files, connecting to um, Google Analytics, all this stuff. Um, it adds up quickly. And real quick, um, you can see how many uh, requests are coming through. Yeah? Is that something you actually have to pay extra for? Most of these actually have it baked in. 
and it just kind of comes in there. And, and we'll be talking about the hosting options here on the next slide. Um, but it's, again, I'm, I'm kind of like looking for that little checkbox for you, right? It's not something that you have to do. Um, I mean, we at work have to do it because we're building our own stack uh, from the ground up uh, for how we do things with AWS on a raw server, and we build it up ourselves. Um, but the way hosting's evolved, there's some pretty good packages now to kind of give you this out of the box. Um, and, and it adds up. Um, and that's, we're, we actually, in our push with um, PHP 7, um, updated Nginx, updated page speed, we haven't even done HTTP 2 uh, uh, yet. And I expect us to get another large gain from that. We're just kind of taking it one thing at a time so we can see what gains we get from what. Um, caching is another thing. Um, it's not that cash money. It's, um, you know, it's, it's caching in terms of you have to get information from a database. And a database, uh, querying that is expensive. It's an operation that takes a while. So if you can say, oh, hey, I'm going to remember this bit of information for a day, an hour, a minute, um, that can help a lot. So again, that's another box to check. It's not something that you have to do. Um, there are plugins out there that can help you do it, but a lot of the good hosts out there kind of give that to you. Um, and, um, and, and the next thing that makes a good host is support. Um, I imagine a lot of you aren't super tech savvy on the internet. You're tech savvy individuals, I know that. But um, when it comes to the web, right, um, you, you want to know when things go wrong, uh, you have support. Um, so um, ho hosting support, right? So there are my points right there. So you know, is it worth an extra 10 or 20 bucks to have someone uh, to potentially save you? I, I say potentially and italicize there because you may have problems, you may not. Um, it's a little bit of a roll of dice sometimes. We harden our systems pretty well. We have had hackers. We've blocked them. We've blocked IP addresses. But if you have a good support uh, from your host, um, they're going to help kind of tackle all these issues for you. And when you get a slowdown, um, they're going to be able to help pinpoint that. Um, so with I, that, I yeah. I have a question for yeah, you, though. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been with A Plus Net since like 1996. Yeah. And uh, I have a little bit of a concern now because they're a Russian-based company. I mean, Jeez. yeah. I mean, A Plus, <laughs> let's, let's just say that A Plus didn't come up in any search I did. And I did a fresh dive into all this stuff. I, it's been a little while since I've kind of like looked at the what the environments look like right now. Owned by Deluxe, which um, most people have heard of because they make their checks and stuff like that. I mean, gotcha. Big company. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, the best you could do is some Googling, see what's up with their name, see if they've had any hacks recently, see if they're in the news at all. Um, I mean, I would imagine that something will pop if it's out there. But if you've been successful with them for a long time, then moving, you know, you may not have to. It's not anymore? It is. Oh, that's what I said. They're Russian. The check writing, making company? Well, the A plus, A plus net part is. It's, yeah, it's in Russian. A plus if you ever call on their support, you'll know for it. Yeah, you'll know the A plus, A plus is Russian. a Russian hosted company. All their engineers are based in Russia. I used them for a long time. Interesting. Have you run into spoofing for them? Um, we have not. Something I'm dealing with that I don't know about. Um, people um, uh, spoofing problems. Um, people pretending to be you. <laughs> we have not. Um, we do things fairly securely. Um, I, I couldn't really speak to that exactly, but we speak afterwards. And uh, maybe just kind of talk about what you're what you're getting at, that. but that could be a symptom of being hacked. <laughs> is usually kind of what's. No, this is unfortunately, the spoofing is happening on a separate server that's located in Saint Petersburg, Russia. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they've taken over my email, and I may have to simply dump it and set up a new account. Yeah. So there you go. That's how you get spoofed. You get hacked, and. There so you the go. moral of the story is: go with a, a known, reliable source. Go ahead, uh, Chris. Yep. Yep. Um, so there's lots of different uh, hosting options. Um, shared is kind of your, your bottom tier. That's what you go. You look on GoDaddy. You look on DreamHost. You look on all these options. That's what they're going to pitch to you for, you know, that five bucks, four bucks, three bucks, seven dollars, something like that. 
Um, shared basically means you're, you're sharing your uh, pipeline. Um, that could mean you get off real easy and no one else has a really high performing site on your node that's hosting your website. And it could mean that you have another site on there that gets a lot of traffic and you get slowed down when they get a lot of traffic. It's just kind of a roll of the dice. Um, now, uh, there's also like shared WordPress hosting that DreamHost does, which is actually kind of a new topic to me um, because I was more familiar with the managed WordPress hosting. Um, but DreamHost does a decent job with it and they have some, some good information there. Um, there's links all throughout it. I, I have a URL for everyone to get the slides as well um, at the beginning and end here. Um, and uh, VPS hosting, virtual private server, this basically gives you dedicated resources. You have a certain amount of RAM, you have a CPU core. Um, it, it just guarantees a little more throughput. Um, and then manage WordPress hosting. Um, this is gonna be my top recommendation of the day um, for people that don't know too much about web sites and web hosting and all these little inner workings. Um, and I actually was pretty pleased with the options I found out there. Um, there are some little pricier ones, less pricey ones, um, so some good options. Um, DreamHost has some pretty good tiers with lots of good info on their site. Um, I, I read some mixed reviews going back and forth. Um, some people said they were great. Some one person in particular had a real hard problem with them. But it kind of goes back to that dice roll. You know, you could have a good experience, you could not. It, it just depends on uh, what tier you get with them and uh, who you're living in the server with. Jeff. Exactly, um, very fair point. And we'll look out for the asterisk. Um, hosting suggestions. Um, uh, my top tier um, hosting options, uh, WordPress Engine, WP Engine, is one that I've used successfully with a couple clients when I was doing freelance work. Um, it would be my personal option if I were building a website for someone and I knew I had to hand it off to them. Um, they have great supports, they do WordPress, they know how to build WordPress servers, they've got great 24-7 support. Uh, this is what they're built on, this is what they do. In fact, it's really interesting because when WP Engine was around originally, um, not many other people were doing this hosted WordPress stuff, but now everyone's in on the game. Um, so that's where we have some other options here. Uh, Pantheon.io is another great one. Um, a little cheaper, um, they tout a lot of the same stuff is WP Engine. They came out after, they really followed their business model. Um, they're, they're great, you can find good reviews about them, great tech support and all that stuff. Um, then you get kind of in some mid-tier managed hosting. Um, SiteGround was one I actually hadn't heard of before, but it kept showing up um, with great reviews everywhere. And I kind of like would do a re-dive, I'm getting a thumbs up from Jeff back there. Um, and they kept on, their name kept showing up again. Um, so. If I were to suggest a cheap host and that's what you're looking for and that was your main factor to get going on this stuff, I would probably do uh, uh, SiteGround. Yeah. Maybe you'll get into them later, but yeah, I'm on GoDaddy right now. Yeah. If, if, I guess if I wanted to enhance the features that I have and GoDaddy doesn't have, is, is it hard to take my site and expand it? Uh, is it hard to take my site say on GoDaddy, yep. and move it to something like WP Engine without having to re-engineer the whole site? Um, it, it, it's, it's not hard for the right person. <laughs> However, there are tools that can help do that. And um, I've got a couple slides later here. There's a plugin that helps you do backups. That's kind of the easiest way to do it. Um, you can actually take a snapshot of your website, and you can then go and create a new website on the new host, and you take that snapshot with, snapshot with that tool and you can just kind of get it in there again. And so you kind of have to shut things down for a moment so you don't, or just don't update anything, obviously. But there are ways to do that. Um, and if you really want your hand held through the process, which is not that bad, um, you know, 100, 200 bucks, a lot of these services will offer to do that for you. Um, but it comes down to the, um, the database and your files. 
And if you can get those in the right place, and there's tons of tutorials out there. They're very easy to follow. Um, for me, <laughs> I, I believe a tech savvy group could also do it. But I think the plugins are the easier way to go with that. So it's reasonable. Yep. For these pricing uh, for the each month, is that month. per site? Yeah, monthly. Like if you have another, like you have more than one website, is that for each site? Too? Um, it, it depends on the service. So WP Engine and Pantheon, that's for one site. Um, and um, they give you some extra kind of nice things with that, especially if you have a web developer working with you. But um, I believe SiteGround actually lets you have unlimited sites, um, which was another um, kind of call in there. Um, but there's like this, like all these link to it. Kind of at the end, I've got a whole bunch of sites and pages I want to go through, and we can look through the options, and I can kind of show you how I'm thinking about picking through the options, um, and, and we can kind of go through all that. Um, but yeah, you'll have to look. Some are unlimited, some aren't. Um, I was actually um, talking to WP Engine um, on their chat. They, they're there right away. Everyone, they're hitting you up, and they wanted um, an extra twenty bucks to add another site on top of that. So, so you'd be at you know fifty-five real quick. Um, but you know, you're, you're getting WP Engine's package. It means different things to different people. You may have a good experience on lower hosts. You may not. Um, it's, it's just kind of how it goes sometimes with hosting. Um, another question that I see? Yeah. Yeah, when they were adding an additional site, is that an, an additional separate domain or is that a separate? Uh, a different site altogether, a new domain altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a lot of these guys will help you with subdomains. Um, I actually didn't put it in my slides in SEO. We don't recommend subdomains. Um, and we'll talk about um, some SEO strategies for how to categorize your content. But um, we actually have one site in particular that has a bunch of subdomains and actually created a massive problem for us. Um, we had a bunch of duplication between them, and Google was seeing it differently. Like we had categories for subdomains, and the, a post could show up in multiple categories under different subdomains, and it created this duplication factor that lowered the value of everything. It was a massive issue. Um, Can you explain what that is exactly? I think um, I know a subdomain? Yeah. Um, subdomain is like if you have example.com, you could have jeffrey.example.com. It's the prefix. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's a prefix versus uh, what comes after the URL and your slug. Can the 30 or 70, 30 or 60, sliding scale depending on the package? Exactly. Like Correct. Um, actually, all these come with that nice stuff that I was talking about, updated version of PHP, um, updated uh, HTTPS, all that stuff. It really comes down to how much traffic your site gets. So if you have a site that only gets 1,000 or 200 visitors a month, you're going to be fine on the bottom tier. But none of these guys shut you off when you exceed. They will probably get you on the horn if you exceed for a couple months, but they're pretty lenient about it. I actually went through some descriptions of them talking about that. Um, but like SiteGround and DreamHost, they're looking more like around 10,000 um, hits a month. Um, and then you can go up to like 20 bucks and get like up to 30, 35,000 hits a month. Um, stuff like that is kind of how they look at it. Um, and uh, DreamHost is, has a host of information on it. Um, a lot of good stuff. And just in terms of basic WordPress stuff, um, hosting in general, it's a little bit of their propaganda intermixed. You have to kind of you know, read it with a grain of salt. Um, but there's a lot of good information on there. I was, I was going to suggest them as one of the top ones, but I did another dive, and I found a few reviews. However, it's, it's mixed, and I think that they'd probably still be a good experience. Um, um, so at this point, we've gone through the hosting. We've got our DNS. Uh, we have our host. So at this point, we basically have a base WordPress installation. Um, this is our starting point. Um, if you want shared, you'll, you'll, they'll be pitching you one-click WordPress installation. You've probably seen that on some hosts before. Um, you'll have to go and do that one click, uh, maybe a couple clicks, but it won't be that bad at the end of the day. You're just on shared, so it's not a managed, which means they don't help you. And so I should actually describe managed a little bit further. Managed hosting, they actually help you update your WordPress version. Um, they scan your site for vulnerabilities. Um, they make sure that the plugins you, you're using are up to date and um, secure. So they kind of like take care of like your system administration, your DevOps for you, um, which we pay people at work to do that stuff and make sure that we're secure. Um, they help with that. And so if you're on a shared plan, you have to 
go in and make sure you're doing the updates. You have to go in and make sure that you're keeping track of what's going on. That's just another selling point of managed. Sorry, are they also commit, uh, checking format compatibility with various um, devices? devices. Um, that comes down to your theme. And we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit when we get to the theme section. Um, so um, keep your admin and user password safe. Um, don't share with people um, at all. That's your admin password. I'm sure some of you are cringing because maybe you did this. Um, I, um, I just want it, right? That, we lock that down in the most secure realm um, at work, and we give people accounts when they need them. We create them. Yes, it's laborious. Yes, it sucks. I have to make a new account. But then you can like, lock down the uh, access that you give them. So if you have a writer, just give them access to writing. Don't give them access to delete everything or change your, word, your options for your theme. Um, it can get, uh, with a couple clicks, someone can really mess some stuff up. Um, so I really, really, really suggest creating accounts for every single person that you give access to your site on. Give them their name and all that stuff. And with that, we're going to do some security, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> so um, I know it's blah, blah, blah to some people in here. But like, you know, the spoofing thing, you don't know if you're hacked. It's just one way to make sure you're covered, at least for one more thing. Um, create a unique password um, for your websites, especially that admin user. Um, you may be Joe Schmo that only has access to certain parts of your site. You know, if he wants to muck it up, you know, well, damn it, Joe. Um, but um, be really careful about this. We use password managers at work. Um, LastPass is our go-to. I recommend it. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's not that fun. But um, I would just say do it. Um, just, just do it. Um, don't pass secure information in plain text emails. Um, how to get around this? Quickforget.com. Um, it's a handy little service. Um, go to quickforget.com. You. So what we do at work, we go into WordPress admin, go to users, we create a new user, and you set up their username, you set up their email address. I go and I generate a unique password with LastPass. It gives me a nice one. I put that into WordPress when I create their, their password. I don't email them the password. And, um, and then I send them the quick forget. And the quick forget basically is a secure token, um, a secure URL that they can go to that expires. That's the key part of it. So you can email something. It's a URL that's in the email that goes out to them that you email to them with their username and this quick forget password. They open it up and it expires so that if you get hacked down the road, it's expired. They can't get to it. Um, it's like the, the, they'll put in like, um, you know, two views or 20 hours or 24 hours. I just added zero to both fields so that you get 20 views or 20, uh, 240 hours, 10 days. If they don't look at the password by that point in time, well, damn it, you're going to have to generate it again. But I would much rather do that than have a leak. It's just kind of like 101 stuff, honestly. Um, and uh, it, it, especially in, as your sites get bigger, you have more eyes on you, as we have with our websites, it's mega secure. That's the biggest way to get into a company. It's just like emailing people and asking for passwords. Um, like that's, that's just how you get hacked. Someone messed up. That's how you got hacked. Um, or just some information leaked some way. Um, so that's the whole spiel there. Um, what makes a good theme? So this is what you were talking about in terms of devices. What makes a good theme? Responsive. Um, responsive, does it work on mobile, tablet, desktop? Uh, Google back in 2015 made a huge push and said, if your websites are not mobile friendly, we're going to ding you. They actually segmented the search results. So they have a different search index for desktop than they do mobile. <laughs> um, and sites that are not mobile friendly, you're probably losing about 20% traffic um, in search results. Um, Straight up. Um, it's only going to get higher um, over time. They're valuing mobile even more. There's an update coming out in June um, that favors mobile even more. And it's performance. It's a new ranking factor is strict performance. It's always been an underlying factor, but now they're saying it directly. There was kind of a big outcry in the community about a few things. And the response was, well, it's going to be a factor now. Um, so uh, responsive um, media types. What are you going to be putting on your website? Um, Posts and pages, those are the obvious stuff, right? Posts are your blog pages. They're time stamped. They're you know, moment in time. Um, pages, about us, contact us, team. But pages could also be 
Ski, you know, um, how to use a camera 101, <laughs> stuff like that. These are, we call that library content. Um, for us, uh, in about a, a drug type or about, uh, a rehab type, um, what is medical detox? Um, and so that would be a page for us. Um, but then maybe you want to post videos from YouTube, Vimeo, or maybe you want to do podcasts from SoundCloud another platform and so beyond. So this is just one more checkbox as you're going through. Okay, do they have what I need? Do they have what I need? Um, forms, contact form seven is kind of the de facto form plugin. You're probably gonna have a contact page. You're probably gonna want people to be, be able to email you. Um, contact form seven, a lot of themes actually tout usage for that and they say, hey, we have like, you know, an integration with that and so we'll help you out. We have some base styles to handle that for you. Um, and a lot of them have it pre-installed. Um, I've got a link for you on another slide to contact form seven. Um, performance, um, as I was mentioning before, performance is all important these days. Um, we've actually said at our company, we're stopping new features right now and we're focusing on performance. Um, we have a long, <laughs> long line of our websites. We have some technical debt. We're really working on cleaning that up now. Um, and the sites that we've done speed improvements on, like I said, 10, 20, 30, we actually got 40% be uh, um, a traffic increase on one of our websites, which is like, it's actually kind of mind blowing. I never, we were like 5%, something like that. And yeah, we're, it's crazy. Um, it, it made a difference for this quarter, big time, um, which it's about the end here. Um, and then um, aesthetic, right? Obviously you wanted to fit your brand, fit your style, um, that good stuff. Um, so finding the right theme for you. So here we're getting into some theme options. On the next slide, we've got even more. Um, so you have to like look at your use case, right? Like, are you gonna wanna heavily customize it? Um, you know, how deep are you going down the rabbit hole? Do you have very strict requirements for how you wanna do it? Total, for instance, we'll look at their page in a little bit and they've got like, you can build a whole bunch of different types of website from this one theme. Um, now, that may be overwhelming to a lot of people. Um, and honestly, I, I'm, I'm a fan of restrictions. I think restrictions are strong because it, uh, it keeps you focused on what you're actually doing. Um, and sometimes having a whole box of all the tricks is just a little too much. Um, so something a little more curated and streamlined. I, I liked Videobox. Um, pretty clean, pretty nice aesthetic. Um, and the, you, know, you, you install the theme, you work with it, you put your posts and just in there and just, you know, you don't really have to do too much. You don't have to think too much beyond it. Um, you can put your logo in the corner, stuff like that, but you don't have to go super crazy with it. Um, and then, you know, depending on if you want to full customize it, there's some other ones out there. Understrap was interesting. Um, Roots um, is a great um, WordPress um, just provider of open source tools. Um, they have a, a custom base theme called Sage. Um, if you have a web developer that was a solid developer building a website completely from scratch, that's an awesome starting point. Um, we build from custom themes at work because we have a lot of custom needs. Um, but um, so here's a bunch more options. Um, uh, there's various in here. So A Themes was a great one. Uh, Theme Forest, WP Zoom, um, Tuts Plus had a really nice package of responsive WordPress themes from 2018. Um, Colorlib had a bunch more for uh, video themes. Um, if you're starting with a fresh theme, I know a lot of you have themes and maybe it may not feel relevant to you, um, but if you're starting with a fresh theme, I would look for something that was produced more recently and was updated more recently. They're just gonna have a little better, more uh, modern best practices uh, for how WordPress is doing things these days. That said, if you have an old theme, it's, it's not like it's all bad. Um, and you, know, you could um, do some, you could weigh your options, and I'm happy to talk to people afterwards about um, situations. Um, cool. Um, so configuring your theme. Um, each theme is gonna have different options. It's really impossible for me to get into all the nitty gritty of what that entails. Every theme is gonna have different things in terms of how they set it up. Um, so it, it's, it's a little bit of a matter of diligence, going in there and looking at all the options that you have, and that may be where it's good, have one really customizable if that's your personality type or maybe one that just has a few options if you just want to get going with the website. Um, some base plugins, um, Yoast SEO plugin is actually what we're using at work now. Um, it's kind of the de facto, I get a head nod over here. Um, 
it, it's, it just kind of helps with some basic tuning. You can get their Pro plugin if you want, not necessary. Our main purpose for it is uh, updating title tags customly um, uh, so that we can tune those for the site. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit more in the SEO section. Um, contact Form 7, Contact Plugin. And then this is where I was talking about backups. Um, so I believe it was Back WP Up um, that was one where you could actually kind of get a whole package of your website and kind of transfer it like that. Um, and so it's kind of like you have your site over here, you go in to get your new host, new website, you go in, you install the plugin, and you, you upload your file that they give you. And boop, you get a new, it just pushes everything over there for you. Um, there may be other ways to do it in their, in their text, but um, that's a way to go about it. Um, backups, important, mega important. Um, if you don't have backups running, please do this first. If there's anything I'm going to tell you right now, do this first. Go and find a backup plugin. One of those. You can go and say backup plugin WordPress and you'll get a top seven, you know, like really easily there. Um, do it because if someone hacks your site, it's going to be gone. Um, and uh, you may lose everything and that would be a big bummer. Um, so back up your sites. Uh, a lot of the hosting uh, option, the uh, managed hosting um, plans do this for you and they have it all in their text and so they help you out of the box. Um, <clears throat> Don't store them on your hosting, <laughs> right? Put it on your computer, put it in Dropbox, put it in Drive, put it in five places. That'd be the best, honestly. Um, maybe after you do a big update, you know, save it in a couple spots so at least you have that snapshot and a point in time. Um, again, this is mega important stuff. Like, you could really lose your site very easily if you're not doing this. I have um, a question. Yeah. I'm backing up. How often do you think you should back up your website? Like once a week? Uh, depends on how often you're updating your site. Okay. If you post daily, I'd back up daily. Um, if you post once a week, once a week, once a month, once a month. Um, a lot of the uh, managed options do it daily, and then you can choose to take a snapshot of like, this was a critical point in time, I did a big update. Let's take a, a firm snapshot here. Um, and, and then that's when you can kind of like cold storage it on your hard drive or anything like that, or, or in drive. Um, but I would recommend daily. Um, I mean, storage is cheap. <laughs> Um, you know, building a website from scratch after you lose all your content, that costs a lot of money. Um, now, there are, uh, you know, the, um, uh, uh, what is it? It's the Wayback Machine. Um, has anyone heard of that, Wayback Machine? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there is a ultimate web catalog, and the Wayback Machine is the ultimate web catalog. Um, so you can go to the Wayback Machine and search for your website, and you can find your site. So if you do get hacked, stuff is gone, that may be one of the best ways to go and find it. And that's literally copy and paste um, out of that, out of the way back machine. But it, it's a pretty, pretty good um, uh, snapshot of things. We, we reference it every once in a while. Um, if you're doing e-commerce, WooCommerce is the easiest way to go with WordPress. Um, a lot of plugins, th that's a whole other ecosystem that you can get into of plugins that, uh, and uh, things that cater directly to WooCommerce. That's another little Pandora's box, but um, it works. I, I've never used WooCommerce myself. Um, so that's kind of the section on WordPress. Um, I think it may be worth just like um, looking at a couple of the sites right now before we kind of kick into um, the SEO section. Are we doing okay on time and things? Uh, or am I, do I need to speed up? Okay, cool. Uh, question, yeah. Uh, what about WordSpace versus Squarespace? Uh, WordPress versus Squarespace? Um, I have not used Squarespace personally. Um, it, um, I'm sure it would be fine. I, I don't know your use case. Um, I mean, they're a little more modern, you know, in terms of how they think about things. Um, but um, I mean, what, we had another one out there that someone, I, I, I don't know, I can't remember. It's been a little while since I've dove into any of the other options. Um, so I couldn't really exactly speak to it. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't matter, honestly. Um, anyone can do this. Really all you're jockeying is websites at this point with this stuff. Um, you're kind of clicking buttons on different websites to get things to install or add a plugin or this and that. So it, it's irrelevant. Um, I mean, if you're developing, a lot of developers are on Mac, but um, it, you can do it on anything. It's a pretty even playing field these days. Um, <clears throat> so this is, um, 
WP Engine. I'm just going to kind of huddle down here. Um, so, you know, they've got a fancy website and everything, and, you know, you can read all sorts of information on it about what they're doing, why they're doing it. Um, I usually like to very quickly go to pricing <laughs> and just, like, get into the nitty-gritty of, you know, what they're actually pitching to me. Um, and this is what it breaks down to, right? Um, so, you know, that $35 a month, you know, risk-free, 60 days, Note that this is the actual price. Um, you know, a lot of sites are going to try and get you on three dollars. And, and here's Mark. Hi, Mark. We're gonna we're not going to talk to Mark right now. Uh, <laughs> doing something, Mark. Calm down. Um, he knows I'm here. Um, so as you can see, it's one site. Um, so three environments. So WP Engine is really friendly for developers. So that's what environments are about. So you may have heard of things like a, a staging environment, a development environment. That's basically a a safe place for a developer to test things out before it goes live. Um, so it's kind of nice if you're really doing a lot of customization, especially if you have a developer that's building something custom for you. I really enjoyed it. I appreciated that my client was willing to pay this extra bit of money. Um, it meant a bit to me. Um, at the end of the day, I could have made it work otherwise. Um, it just was a help. Um, so 25K visits a month, 50 gig bandwidth, yada, 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 CDN, SSL, SSL, that's basically your HTTPS um, migration. So look, they, they help you do a migration, um, you know, to your point that you had earlier. Um, and they just kind of do amazing extra things for you um, out of the box in terms of what they give you and how they build their stack. Um, PHP 7 ready, um, you know, page performance, SSL cert, so that's, you know, the security um, for HTTPS, um, all this kind of good stuff. So a lot of it, you know, may feel like jargon, but um, these guys, these guys know what they're doing. Um, Pantheon, um, you know, it's it's a very familiar, you know, it's a very similar kind of vibe on here. Um, they do various different types of hosting if you need, but um, again, we go to the pricing. We can get in here and we can see kind of what's going on for their different tiers. So you know, they they say they give you a little less uh, monthly page views now. You'll notice it's like, wait, 25 to 100? Wait, what the hell's up with that? Now, um, a lot of these guys, they'll help you, and they have a custom kind of plan. So if you think you're going to be exceeding that, it may be worth um, talking to them ahead of time about what it would cost for 30K visits a month, because they're not probably just going to bump you straight up to the 100 a month. Um, site grounds. Um, so this is the WordPress hosting that I actually really was uh, looking at a lot. If I were to be, you know, looking at something that were a little cheaper, yeah, I mean, you could just start with this, you know. Your first month is going to be 4 bucks. It'll go up to 10 bucks a month real quick. Um, but you'll be able to get started. All these guys help you move to the next tier very seamlessly, so you're not losing anything by starting on the low tier. Um, and, and maybe a little less performant in terms of the hardware that they're giving you. Um, but, you know, OnePress installer, auto updates to the latest WordPress version, super cacher. That means they're just helping you cache requests that's going across the pipeline so it's a little bit faster, not hitting the database as fast, as much rather. Um, so, again, various tidbits in here. I, I really like what they had to offer um, overall. Um, what's that? Oh, yeah? Okay, nice, nice. Good to hear. Yeah, I, I haven't known anyone. They just like time and time again, reviews. Um, so I, I put some pretty good faith in them. Um, and, you know, DreamHost, they, they've, they've got a nice package in terms of everything they offer, different tiers, um, you know, 17, 25, 36, up the line. Um, they, they do a pretty good sales pitch in terms of how they pitch themselves overall. Uh, but, and, and they actually, if you get this plan, they give you um, a catalog of themes to choose from. So that, that could be valuable to some people um, if you want. Um, but if you know you already have a theme you really like, it may not be as valuable to you. Um, and uh, yeah, here's the Yoast SEO. Or, or no, no, no. This is actually Yoast.com that has the Yoast SEO plugin. But I found this site to be pretty interesting. They kind of went through and like, um, just like highlighted the different features and price range of different hosts. And so this was just one touch point that I had in terms of looking at kind of what was going on. So, you know, here's Pantheon, SiteGrounds. Um, you know, GoDaddy, I've talked to plenty of people that have had good experiences with GoDaddy, so I'm not, like, talking bad about them. But, um, you know, their sites will probably be a little bit slower than others. Um, WP Engine, DreamHost, so, so they're all represented. Um, 
Um, and so then looking at the themes, um, so this is A themes, right? Um, and you know, they have a huge you know, portfolio. Um, I kind of find it nice to like, get into one of their more curated collections first, just to kind of look at what they see as their big ones. Um, and so you can kind of get a nice look at the various aesthetics and kind of just go through and, and take a look and see what resonates with you um, out of the box. Um, in fact, Video Box um, was one that I thought was really nice um, in terms of just like what it had to offer. And you know, you can take a deeper dive and you can go in and look at specifically at uh, Video Box um, and see everything that it has to offer. Um, 69 bucks, you can look at the live video, the live demo. Um, I personally think it's worth it to pay for a good theme. Uh, it's a one-time deal. Um, there's a lot of free themes out there. They're just, they're just not quite as good um, usually um, in terms of uh, how recently they've been updated. Um, it, but uh, you may have different experiences. Um, theme Forest, they've been around forever. Um, this is one of the big boys. Um, they're kind of like spread all around. And they like, um, even here, like a lot of these themes are actually link out to um, Theme Forest. And this Envato is this company that kind of has some platform on top of WordPress themes. Um, but this was another interesting one for responsive WordPress themes. All those, these are just all the links that I had in the slides. Um, so again, going through, taking a look, feeling what aesthetic speaks to you, dive in further. Does it check all the boxes for the media types that I want? And that's kind of the course of action that I would take um, to, to get yourself into this stuff. Um, I have a theme. Can you change it in three months? Um, I mean, if you want to go from one theme to another. Well, <laughs> um, I mean, that would, that would make our... Um, no, 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 no. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an extremely valid question. And it's funny because, um, you know, our, our key, like, um, well, his title changed recently. He's our, our director of, like, growth strategy and everything. He's a big search engine. Uh, he's an optimizer, a page optimizer. So he does a lot of tests on web pages. And he says the bane of his existence is a redesign <laughs> um, because you don't know what you're going to get from that. Your SEO value is very much tied to your theme. So if you go and you change your theme, for instance, maybe one theme has breadcrumbs and it says, oh, here's you know, the high level page and your lower level page and your mid level page or something like that. And your new theme doesn't have that, you may lose linking structure altogether. One theme may have content that's high up on the page that Google sees as valuable and another theme may have a huge header and pushes your content down lower. And so it's like, it's very difficult. <laughs> Um, and for, it's, yeah. For my knowledge, the yeah. theme is the look of your page. Yeah, okay. exactly. Just making sure we're on it. Yeah. Yeah. What we've, what we've found is that we kind of need to rebuild our website about every five years because it just, the themes get old. Yep. And so the question I have for you, and this is something that's becoming more and more of an issue, is that when you change, like we have articles that have been seen you know, thousands of times, and when we change the theme, I think we lose all of that linkage and... You could. I mean, different themes are going to have like different sidebar links, for instance, and that's like a big thing that our SEOs um, like focus on in terms of like how you cross-link between pages, and one theme may do that better than others. Um, so the best thing that you can do if you want to change themes is look at one, what one theme does and what the other does. Is, is there an equivalent value between the elements on the page. I have my title, I have my dates, I have my text, I have my sidebar, are the same things in the sidebar. If things are changing greatly, then you should definitely, like that, that's, a, that's a cause for potential concern. But if you, maybe you're gaining things, like maybe they have a new little widget that helps you with embed videos, or they actually give you better sidebar options for cross-linking, that could be a positive for you. So like, I know that's a difficult uh, for, the, for the group to kind of like handle, but it's, it's difficult for me to handle too. And the way we actually get into changing websites now is by testing into it. We don't even really like do full scale changes. We do that very rarely. Um, we, we incrementally test, but we're running very different websites than you guys are running. And a lot of your value may come from a business card and people going and knowing about your site. That's a different scenario. If you're getting organic search results, that is when you need to be worried, or not worried, just um, understanding of what you're doing um, in a very diligent way um, when you make that change. Um, and I have a slide in here talking about Google Analytics, and it'll tell you if you have um, uh, organic traffic or not. 
And then you may be able to kind of know, like, okay, yeah, I can safely change my theme. I don't have a ton of organic traffic. Uh, we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. We're going to kick into the SEO section. Yep, uh, we got here in the back, and then we got you. Okay, so we can make a theme look different, correct? Oh, yeah, all but sorts of ways. Uh, you probably do, you might need a new theme for a new look. Um, so your theme is very much tied to that look. Some themes have a lot of different options that may allow you to change the look within the theme, but for the most part, you're gonna have to change the theme. Um, and I mean, you can install multiple themes on your website, and so if you have, you know, if, if you're starting up a fresh site, it's not gonna hurt you to just install a bunch of themes and go for it. Um, and in most cases, even if you have an existing website, you can install another theme, you could try the plugin out, or try the theme out, and you could switch back to the other one. Um, there are like instances where that could potentially bite you, but that's where I would have a backup. <laughs> if you have a backup, you have a place to go back to. And so then you're back to that little safety net of the backup. So a lot of people are using back scrolling. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, uh, parallax scrolling is, is just, you know, that, you know, that little, it's, the, it's, the, it's an experience that the user has on your page. Um, as long as that's not bumping your title down greatly, like Google really isn't going to care about that. It's not really a thing to them. You do want an H1 tag on the page. You, you, you got to have that. Otherwise, you're probably not going to rank for much of anything if you don't have an H1 on the page. Um, um, it's usually your main title, so if you have a post and it's got about up there or about digital SLR cameras or something like that, it's going to be in an H1. Um, but if you really want to know how you could specifically check it, uh, everyone probably has Google Chrome. It's going to get crazy. Um, so you can right click, right? So I'm just right clicking. I'm going to inspect. <clears throat> Oops, and yep, here we go. So it is a H1 um, right there, we can see. So we're actually inspecting. Where did you see that? This is the H1 right there in the code. Oh. So this is what your site really looks like. <laughs> uh, this, this is my language. Um, you know, so um, th this is an H1 right here. So your, your primary title is generally going to be the H1. Um, and so, yeah, if you want to verify it for yourself, you, you can do that. Um, but basically, everyone's going to have an H1 for you on the page for, for your default post types that are coming out of WordPress. One thing I noticed on my GoDaddy is it, like, it seems like it, it has multiple themes already hooked to my page. But every once in a while, I, can, I switch it, and it puts bubbles in instead of you know, the text is moved around and everything. But the text is all there. It still fits. You know, instead of three columns, it's yeah, because you changed the theme, basically, is what you're saying? Yeah. But it, 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 it's built into the GoDaddy system. And I just say, oh, I'll fix that one today. And it shuffles everything around. I GoDaddy probably gives you a bunch of pre-installed themes. And so that's probably what they give to you there. And so. Um, no, not necessarily. It still is only loading one theme at once. So you could have as many themes installed as you want as long as you don't have some old theme that has some security vulnerability in it, um, which could be a thing, um, but probably not. Um, so again, updating your themes and removing old themes that you're not using is a good practice. It's definitely with plugins as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So you, you're talking the theme that's active, is that the one that matters? Or even if you have the stuff yes. installed in the background, everything matters is what you're saying. Um, the, the active theme is what matters. <coughs> Active theme, yep, active theme. correct. So you could have a bunch of themes installed. So you can go and add a new theme, you could download it in, but you have to very diligently activate a theme. And a lot of times they'll let you preview it, it's, um, and you can kind of get that little snapshot. It's usually not a perfect preview, but um, it's, a, it's a pretty good look into it. And again, that's why I like, take a snapshot, take your backup, test the new theme, you can breathe easy, that you can go back in time to, to a safe point. 
Cool. Um, good. Excellent. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep us cruising. Um, we we had more in here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna flip back over to the presentation. Um, search engine optimization. Um, so uh, we had a question: What is organic? Um, the so SEL: the practice of acquiring traffic from organic, non-paid search engine results pages. We we call this in the biz SERPs, um, and this is natural traffic acquisition. Um, so Google ranks you, and they have search engine results pages. And if someone goes and searches for Joe Schmo, and Joe Schmo has a website, and they go and click on Joe Schmo, then um, that's an organic um, click. That's, that's an organic signal um, to your website. Um, and um, the traffic is coming in that way. Call it natural, organic. It's non-paid is the big thing to harp on there. Because you can pay for traffic. You can go into Google AdWords, you can go into Facebook, and you can pay for traffic. We, we do that, actually. When we have a new initiative, um, we have some landing page, and we want to test it out or test out multiple variations. We'll do a spend, and we'll spend uh, five or 10 or whatever thousand dollars, and we'll get a bunch of traffic, and we'll see how many leads we get on that. We'll, we'll see what our ROI is, and then from there, we know that, okay, well, this one worked better, so now this is going to be the new live one. And now hopefully we start acquiring organic traffic over time to this page. But organic traffic doesn't just happen overnight. That, that's, that's a labor of love. You, you, gotta, you gotta put time into that. And we're gonna talk about some, some best, best practices to get you there. Cool. Um, so um, I've got a, a recommendation in here. Um, a Moz, a Beginner's Guide to SEO. Moz is kind of the big guy in SEO. Um, they, they're just kind of a front runner. They've been around forever. Um, they know what they're doing over there. Um, it's a great course that you could get through. And you know, it, it might be a little heavy, but you know, a few hours and you could get through the bulk of it. And you'd have a pretty good understanding of SEO pretty wholeheartedly. Um, I'm speaking um, a bit from that, but also from my experience. I think you could kind of feed yourself a little bit there, but for what we do at work and how we kind of think about things, um, and we have very, very high-level SEO people at our, our office that would probably cost a lot of money to, um, get, a, um, to get information from. Um, but, um, but yeah, so we kind of break down SEO into three core areas. Um, the user experience. This is the look, the feel, the interaction, um, how long they're on the page, the site speed, the performance, right? That's part of your experience, right? You go to a web page, if it doesn't load fast, you're having a poor experience. You leave. That's called bouncing. I'm bouncing on you, yo, um, and you're out, right? And, um, and, and that is a bad signal. We'll, we'll talk about uh, that shortly. Um, so a good theme and good hosting helps with the user experience. Um, links, um, this is another part, right? So links from reputable sources are good. Links from shady sources are bad. Uh, we actually do a practice called disavowing links. And this is someone that linked to us that we don't like. <laughs> And we don't want Google to hold that link against us. Um, back in the day, you could pay 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 10,000 bucks, 100,000 dollars, and you could get a whole ton of links. They'll give you links, give you volume of links. But we pay, we would pay good money for one quality link. If if we can get in, you know, New York Times or something like that, that is a high quality link right there. And we actually spend big bucks writing content and building interactive graphics and all sorts of cool stuff to hopefully get picked up by these guys. And that's what our PR team works on, is pitching us to these guys. Um, and we actually have a team that we've been paying a lot of money to every month that builds this stuff for us. They build viral campaigns and stuff that could potentially go viral, interesting content. Um, it's, it's, it's a link campaign, that's all it is. It's just, we're just trying to get links. Um, now, links, are definitely a huge factor. You can still build on organic, but the more you can reach out and have someone that is in your interest, if you're writing about cameras and you got another camera guy and you link to each other wholeheartedly because you're helping each other because you have a good resource and they have a good resource, that's a good link and that's good for both of you. Um, and so that goes back to like talking about social media campaign and linking around. Like the more you can help each other when it's from the right place at the right time, in the right context for the user, helping the user, right? Because SEO is all about helping the user. 
um, and that's, that's gonna help out. Um, and then the, the last bit of the SEO trifecta is content. Do users get what they're looking for from your content, right? Um, pretty, pretty simple there. Um, I just wanna do a quick stop, say set up Google Analytics. Um, a lot of themes do this for you. They'll have a little place you can put in an ID for Google Analytics. If they don't, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, but you can usually, a lot of themes will let you edit the files and you can go to Google Analytics, set up a Google Analytics account. We'll give you a little snippet. It's about this big, some text, a bunch of jargon that you don't really understand to look at. You don't have to. And you wanna put that, and I mean, we're, now we're actually putting it mainly in our header. Um, you can, as long as it's in there, it's gonna help you out. Um, we could talk about that afterwards, but um, there's lots of tutorials and articles out there on the web that'll help you do this. But have Google, Google Analytics running so you understand where your traffic's coming from. As simply as that. Um, what's organic? What traffic is coming from where? Did, did I get a link from Joe Schmo that linked to me? Is, do I have traffic coming from him? How much? I can look at that stuff um, very quantifiably. Um, so where to start in the sea of SEO? Um, analysis, right? Um, you gotta, gotta analyze things. Um, identify the user's needs. Google more and more these days is focused on the user's needs. Are you meeting their needs when they go to a website? If you say that you're gonna teach them about cameras, do you teach them about cameras? Or are you just saying, camera, 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 buy the camera, right? You know, <laughs> right? People are gonna bounce. People, that's, you're not helping them with information. If someone searched for, um, you know, how to use a digital SLR camera, and your website is talking about sales of websites, or webs of uh, cameras, <laughs> that's not gonna be good, and it's not gonna work out. The page isn't gonna rank. And if you have a bunch of website pages on your site doing that, your website's gonna get chopped down, and you can actually get penalized. And we've had that happen to us. Um, and we had to go through hoops, um, and we fixed it, but it was a nightmare. Um, so um, look at demands, trends, what's going on in the wilds. Uh, look at your competitors, what are they doing? Search for what you think you're trying to uh, target. Go and search for it, what's the wild? What, what does it look like out there? What, what, what is the marketplace in the top results page for digital SLR camera information? Um, what do they do well? What do they not do well? What are they missing? Um, if you have a current site, what do you do well and not so well? Um, what gaps do you have? Gap analysis, right? Um, really, I mean, it may seem basic, but that is, you know, the guts of digging in there if you want to become an expert in an area. And I don't know, like, how many people have websites that try and cater in that way of, of teaching and instructing and giving information, um, but it's a great way, even if you are selling your services, it's a great way to pitch yourself that you're knowledgeable, you know what you're talking about, and you actually give users information. Um, Based on your analysis, break things into topic groups. Write content. Um, avoid redundancy in topics. You're competing with yourself. Um, we actually, at this point, uh, we have so many websites in the addiction space that we compete with ourselves. Um, we, we control so many of the top search results that uh, you know drug facts on a certain type of drug may be so diluted by our own value that we don't get anything by writing on one of our other sites about that thing. So we're actually peeling that back and we're looking at how we can create unique voices for each of our websites to, t to speak to different audiences. Are we speaking to family members? Are we speaking to friends? Are we speaking to young individuals? Um, people respond to content differently. Who, what's your audience? Um, okay, okay. So yeah. to clarify, since all of us are not maybe as good, uh, <laughs> you're talking about between different web addresses, not on your site. Because I have a site that's on the Maritime Silk Road. Every single page is on the Maritime Silk Road. Right, and that's fine. But, but that reinforces that search engine. Right, but you just wouldn't want to, on your website, write multiple pages about the same thing, right? If you exactly have, the same right, thing. you know, I mean, it was, it was a pretty funny comparison, right? So one of the examples our, our top SEO guy gave us was you could write an article on rehab centers and what, it, what it's like to go to a rehab center and that would be one unique topic, but if you want to write a topic, write another article on best rehab centers, that's actually a different topic. And so that actually qualifies as having two different pages. Um, so there's kind of like nuances to it, but you don't want to compete with yourself, right? Because you're going to have one page ranking for the same thing, or two pages ranking for the same thing. Um,
Potentially, depending on how you set it up. They kind of treat like subdomains as almost like a separate site sometimes, depending on how things are looked at. So, excuse me, like at the end of the day, we just don't do subdomains at all. And we're the one site that we acquired um, that has them all over the place, it still is like a nightmare project that someone's going to have to take right. care of, and it's not going to be me. What um, about <laughs> um, I, I, I've, I've got a slide on that. I've got a slide on that. Yep. Um, is it the next slide? Um, no, we'll, we'll get there though, but redirects, we'll talk about it. Um, good clicks. Um, if the user has to click back, that's a bad click. That's a negative signal. That's a minus one to Google. Um, it's kind of hard. There's no like actual real formula to this stuff. Um, it, it's Google's algorithm. They don't want to tell you what they're doing in there. But if people go to your site and they click back real fast, that's considered a bounce. Your time on page was really low. Google says, hey, they, they didn't find what they were looking for. Let's, let's put someone above you that found what they're looking for. Um, and uh, high bounce rates uh, you know, is uh, going to make your page rank go down. Um, but if someone comes to your page, they find what they want, and they actually exit the browser, or, or they leave that page up for a long time, Google's like racking up you know, those dollar bills for you right there. Um, and um, and that's, a, that's a good click. That's a good signal that someone went to the page, they found what they were looking for. Um, that, that's just a good indicator to Google. Um, and performance plays a huge part in this. You guys heard me say earlier, right? If you go to a web page and it's taking forever to load, you, you, you back out, right? Um, so that's why I value a good host um, so much. Um, and it's, it's often worth it to pay that little extra bit to make sure that you have resources on a machine that's going to be performant. Redirects. Um, it's a 301 redirect, as we call it. That's the protocol of what's kind of sended around. But basically, at the end of the day, you don't want to just go changing all your URLs. If you write a bunch of content, um, you don't want to go in there and try and change that URL without actually making a redirect. Um, the Yoast SEO plugin actually helps you create redirects. So in the case that you do need to make one, um, that can help you. But I, I, I really just would say, like, if you're creating a new page, think about the slug. What, what, what is it? You know, what, what is... This right here, themes, video box. This, this is your slug, right? They wouldn't want to come in here and say video box, you know, two or something right, like that, right? Like, it's a new address, right? That's a new place that Google doesn't know. But with a redirect, we can say, hey, Google, I had to change the address. I know it was this. Now it's this. Please give me the link juice from that page, um, as, as we call it. It's not bad. It just kind of stacks up. If you have, like some of our sites have a ton of redirects because we've been re-architecting how we organize all of our articles. So it's not like I'm saying it's bad. It's just kind of a pain. <laughs> and like no one in here, I'm sure, would get to the scale that we're doing on redirects. So it's not like it's a necessarily like a performance issue. It could become one, but it's just better not to. And if you mess it up and you don't put the redirect in place, you could get yourself into trouble. Um, and you basically like that new page, even though it's been around with that content, is viewed as a new page on the internet. And, and you see that by like, it's like, if, this doesn't, if the page doesn't go here in three seconds, click here, is that, is that my redirect? No, no. I mean, sometimes they'll actually redirect you through things, but you're like Nginx or Apache, your, your HTTP handler actually does that behind the scenes and it should be seamless. You're probably thinking of like an ad click, a redirect kind of thing. Okay. And that's them. That, that's their means of tracking things. That all they're doing right there is tracking an ID and then routing you to the page that that ID corresponds to. What, um, what I was asking about is not actually redirecting within a page because yep. I have some experience. With gotcha. That. But uh, I was asking about, like for example, we have uh, in most of our web URLs, which we have about sixty, um, we get both the .org and the .com whenever possible. But of course, we only develop one of the two. And so then we'll yes. like repoint a lot of the .orgs. People automatically kind of put .com in, so then we'll like repoint the .orgs. Yeah, you choose one, right. That, that's the end of the story, right, is choose one. So if you have a .com, a .org, a .net, and you want to just cover your domains like that, just in case someone goes and types it in like that, we, we redirect. Um, so you choose one. You always want to choose one. And you also want to choose one for www or not www. It's not negative. It's not bad. You, you, can, you can have that, and you can have that extra host around. It's just making sure that you're redirecting it. 
the highest level, which is usually going to be in Apache or Nginx, um, to, to make sure that that transaction happens. Um, so that may be a situation for less tech savvy people that you may need to like reach out to your hosting provider to help with that in various ways, and I'm sure that they could point you in the right direction for their service. Um, but, but yeah, what it, it's okay. Um, so if we look right here, I would wager that these guys, so I just removed the www. We'll see if they're horrible or not. No, they're not horrible. Okay. Um, so they made sure that they stick to one. Um, and so this is just, you want to keep it or not. Honestly, these days, it's like, it's kind of irrelevant. Choose one. You want a www? You don't. It doesn't matter. We have sites that have both ways. It's just whatever you prefer. I don't know. If I were building a fresh site, I do non-www. It's just less the yeah, type. Um, but a lot of old sites of ours that have had it, we keep it. Um, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's good then. That's awesome. They're helping you out there. Yeah. yeah. As long as you choose one and you can go on your web page and you can remove it or add it and it changes it over to the right one, then you know you're good. Because otherwise, you're actually competing with yourself. And you could actually have two different search results pages for www and non, um, which you just dilute yourself. So I appreciate all of this information. It's a lot. I'm kind of intimidated by it. If you're like somebody who's just starting out and not, I don't have a business or anything, um, but I just want to get a website um, going for a couple of different ways. <coughs> Would you recommend like for practice, maybe like Wix or Weebly, like a free? Um... I mean, you could go that route. Um, I mean, I know this may feel a little overwhelming. I'm kind of I'm covering a lot of bases of kind of like some edge case things. It's not like stuff that you have to like know and apply like all the time. I mean, most of you aren't even going to run into these situations. It's just like that one little thing in the back of your head that Chris said that one time, and maybe you could like re-reference this video or my slides and at least know what is being talked about and have a little bit of information to Google a little bit further and understand a little bit more. But if you're building a fresh website from scratch, I would probably choose you know, the, the, the site ground, and I would choose the theme. And I would go with a managed, you know, their managed WordPress hosting, and I'd set up a theme. And I would, I would, if I'm brand new to it, I'd choose a theme that is more curated with less options, and I'd start writing content. And I'd just keep it real simple. And, and what do you think about those free ones, like Wix and Weebly? I, I mean, I know that it works for a lot of people. I, it's just not something that I've, I've done in my career a bunch. I don't, I don't know if Jeff has. With, with Theme Forest, yeah. they, and in Vado, they have different, different categorizations of themes, so you can pick a theme that will meet your, your needs. They also have different prices. But, and then when you, when you install that theme in, in your host, it'll, it'll give you the option to download sample pages of what they think you, you would need for your business. The best thing to do is to go to YouTube, and there's a bunch of people that show you step by step how to put a website together. And the key thing is, when uh, when you're looking for your website, make sure that the website they're making looks almost like the one that you want, or just like the one you want. Because you don't want to get halfway through making a website and then realize, wait a minute, the website he's making doesn't look anything like what I want to do. Um, and and your hosting. The hosting part, if you want to get somebody else to host it, because they'll usually send you the alligator something or something that... Hostgator. Hostgator. <laughs> I forgot what it was called, but uh, they'll send you that because they get a <laughs> kickback. If you want to find one that's uh, more cost effective, it, it's just a little change in the beginning, and then you can go through with their step-by-step -step stuff. That's the best way to do it. If you try yep. to jump in and figure it out like he did, or he talking about, forget it. it it's going to be too hard if you've never done it before. Well, I mean, I think you could choose a host and go through it, install a theme, and you'd be running. Like, if you just take into account the first few slides, choose a host, choose a theme, it, you're, you're going to have a good time, I think, honestly. <laughs> like, it, you'll, you'll be able to get through it. But I, I do also recommend YouTube. Like, they have everything on YouTube, everything under the sun. You, and I mean, Do you have more um, to go, Chris? How far are we here? Yeah, um, almost there. Um, I'll, I'll speed through the rest. Um, Title tags, they matter. When you're putting it in the page, uh, make sure that you're um
and a reasonable title tag. Um, everything adds up. Yoast SEO actually helps you get through this. Um, page relationships. Um, so this is what my dad was talking about with the whole hub parent-child thing. We, we, break down, we break things down into different categories. And so if you want a category of cameras, a cam category on green screens, a category on this and that, that you could, you could basically have a parent page. And then underneath that, you can have more pages. It's a little easier to see right here. So for example, um, right here, right? So if you wanted to have a parent page, um, it would be, you know, 4K dash cameras, right? But if you want a child underneath that, it'd be 4K dash cameras slash lens. And so that, that's your basic link structure for an, for an easy to follow paradigm for how to structure your content. And that, that's really it in a nutshell. Do you suggest not going any deeper than that? I would not suggest going any deeper than this, very firmly. We, we what? Uh, two levels deep on your slug is basically what we're suggesting. So I would only go every, you know, 4K lens, and, you know, like this, one, two, and that's it. We don't do three at all. And so hub is actually kind of like an interesting topic because like if you have a very broad topic, a hub almost like links to a bunch of parents and under the parents, there's a bunch of children. And so for us, we have hundreds of hundreds of articles. This works well for us. Um, but at the end of the day, keep it two levels. Um, don't keyword stuff when you're writing articles. Don't just try and jam every keyword under the sun in there. <laughs> Um, like, it, this is actually an old SEO tactic, and they're going to ding you for it. We've actually been doing a thing called de-optimizing our pages, where we're removing keyword stuffing. And so it's funny to, like, say that our, our SEO optimizers are de-optimizing our pages, and that is a thing that we are doing. Um, but uh, just, just write naturally. Um, and this, I believe, is the last slide. Um, Find a cadence, you know. If, you're, if you have a blog, a YouTube channel, anything like that, um, rhythm. If you want to build an audience, they want something predictable. Um, I'm sure that the SEO, you know, next time around will speak to this as well. But, um, you know, it, it, it adds up and, and predictability really matters. Um, so uh, we've done a lot of q and I'm, I'm happy to answer anything else. And, um, but uh, but I, I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you very much. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's great. Uh, let's take a couple of questions. Uh, Rob uh, Tharp, who helps run th this facility, actually came back. So he's going to actually give a little bit of a talk. Uh, one question, and then we'll let, let Rob get on. Go ahead, Marianne. Oh, I just wanted to know, when do you know that you should hire someone to do your website? Um, <laughs> depends on how Now, <laughs> apparently. I mean, if, <laughs> I, this was a lot. Go back through the slides. It's digestible, yeah, I promise. Yeah. Um, if, uh, if you want to build something custom, Pretty much, you're going to need it. I mean, you could pay somebody, um, you know, in the figure of I don't I don't know. It depends on who you're asking, but you know, thousand bucks, a couple thousand bucks to maybe like configure something for you and set it up from the ground up for you and do all the little ins and outs. Um, but um, it it just depends. I mean, you could take a stab at it yourself and see how it goes with a base theme and a base host and and go. I know I talked about a lot of different things. I wanted to cover various topics of just kind of, again, things to have in the back of your head that Chris said that one time. Um, but um, but it, it's really not all that bad. Choose a theme, go, start writing content, get in there. Good. Good. Um, Chris is going to post the slides. You that is the about? URL right there. It's there you go, guys. The there it is right there. So go to that URL, and you will get That's a uh, one. Two. So one R capital V A B C. And why do we go there? Uh, if you, if you, if want, you to want a copy the slide. of the slides, <laughs> all the slides. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> Marianne. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. You're good. Um, thanks again, Chris. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Maybe you could send um, that link out too. In the next we're slide. all over everything. Yes, we will. That'll be Should in the I wrap leave up. Should I that for a moment? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Rob did come back to um, uh, actually give a little bit more of the ins and outs. I kind of breezed right over it really quickly. And um, so everybody, this is Rob Tharp. Well, thanks, Tom. It's awesome seeing the studio used for uh, you know, an amazing little event. Chris gave some awesome information today. Um, Lots of familiar faces. I think I know pretty much everyone in here. But for those that don't know, this is Rent Cine. Um, we're like one of San Diego's few studios left. Um, 
But um, in addition to like the, the studio, um, we also own a creative agency. And so coming from our perspective, it was a pleasure to have Chris in and um, definitely listen to him. He provided some amazing info. Um, super happy to see everyone here. It was, it was great. But, uh, so yeah. talk about some of your other projects with uh, your help. Yeah, so, so basically Carlos, Carlos is in, in the back slaving away on a project. But um, we actually have three different companies. One is Grahava Films, which is our feature film company. We just uh, finished a feature film called Losing in Love. Uh, we just distributed it on Amazon and iTunes, and then we're in talks with Netflix, so we're working on that. And then uh, we have our creative agency, which is Mind Factory. So we do everything from commercial work to, um, you know, Literally a a anything digital media, you know, websites, working on that as well. Um, we have a couple branding clients, um, kind of everything across the board on that spectrum. And then Rent Cine is specifically focused on the studio and beer rentals. So we've kind of become like a concierge service. So we found like a lot of luck with like clients coming in from like New York or Chicago. And, you know, they just bring in, oop, be careful. Um, should everyone sign the waivers? Good work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Right, um, we found like a lot of luck with that of just like becoming more of like a concierge service. So that's kind of where we've shifted to, of, like you know, clients coming in from Chicago, New York, just like the producer and like the talent, and then like we'll you know bring in crew and equipment and all that type of stuff. So like you know we'll have it set up when they come, and they're just like, wow, this is such a joy to you know work here because like it's just done, and then they can leave and hop oh, on a plane. Oh my, what's what's this? Oh, isn't it your birthday today? Indeed it is. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. He was just trying to have me kill to yeah. kill time here. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rob. Happy birthday to you. Right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yes. Blow them candles out, boy. Yes. You can do it. You can do it. All right. Smoke alarms. Okay. There we go. Thank you, Rob. Thank you guys uh, so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rob, for help, being a member of our, our community and doing great work and helping us out and doing your own great work as well. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. yeah thank Thanks again. Yeah. Good. So I think that's a wrap on this meeting tonight. Uh, Chris will hang around for a little while if you want a little bit of one-on-one. -on -one. Again, you can get the slides. And the, the full broadcast of the entire piece will be on YouTube and Facebook uh, forever. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Now you can watch it. My birthday celebration is There we go. Exactly. Everybody. Yeah. Venezuela is like going, ah, I know Rob. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Oh, wrap. All right, wrap. We have one thing. Okay, we got to, we got.